Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Imperfect Marketing. I'm your host, Kendra Corman, and today I have with me Brett Deister, and he is a podcaster extraordinaire. He is a host of Digital Cafe, right? Coffee? No, Digital Coffee? There's like three different podcasts, but Digital Cafe is like the main there we go. Branch like, of what I do. I'm like I thought it was digital cafe, and then I was like, "Wait, I see a cup of coffee on your T-shirt." Um, so I was it was throwing myself off. So welcome, thank you so much for joining me today. I'm super excited to be talking about podcasting. Clearly, I am a fan of podcasting since I am having you here on my podcast. Right? Gotcha. Yep, that's true. So let's talk a little bit about podcasting trends. Where is podcasting headed? It seems like the two biggest one is going to be video and it's going to be AI because everybody talks about AI. I mean, my marketing podcast, which is Digital Coffee Marketing Brew. I mean, that's like the number one thing is how can we use AI better and how can we not sound like we're using AI at the same time? Well, it's AI makes life so easy. However, I think people are taking a lot of shortcuts and just like letting it do everything rather than letting it be the first to draft. And I, I think that that's a really big struggle. It's making life, again, a lot easier. It's saving you a lot of time. It can't just do everything for you yet. We'll say yet because I'm sure eventually it's going to get even better, which is just crazy and blows my mind. But but yeah, AI is going to be a big trend. What, a, what about video? So, I mean, the latest stats I read, I think it was actually last year, is that people listen to podcasts in the morning and afternoon. So listen to audio. But at night, they'll watch it. So you have two different audiences. And I know it sounds like it's kind of like bad and boring if you actually don't or if you do video because you're just staring at somebody, someone staring at the screen, but it is a way for people to connect because as we all know, as marketers or communication experts, what 90, 80, 90% of your communications is through nonverbal. So nonverbal is also another key component of it. So it does help, but I get what people are saying. I mean, you're not going to have like the Joe Rogan, like style of like video set up and everything, but you could still make it interesting. Okay. So tell me more about that. Talk to me more about making it interesting because you and I are standing here or sitting here staring at each other at a computer screen. <laughs> How can we make I this mean, more interesting? Yeah. You could like go to B-roll if you wanted to a little bit, like maybe something tied to it. You could, you could do different camera angles. Like I will cut if it's, if it's just the, for me, if it's just the guest speaking, it's them. But if it's me and them speaking, it's them, it's us two. And then it go, cuts back and forth as much. I mean, the B-roll, I mean, it, it, you, it's just a trial and error. You have to figure out what the audience is going to be looking for for that. So it's basically a whole bunch of trial and error. Like, okay, what are they really looking for? And what can I do to help with that type of a thing? Because you're trying to make it interesting, but also informational, depending on your personality, obviously. So if you want to be funny, well, you could try to be funny, but I mean, that's always subjective to everybody because not everybody's going to think you're funny, but you could try. I mean, that's always a good thing. Yes. Um, I, I watched, I've watched the, I've had it podcast ladies on TikTok as I've been scrolling through it before their little snippets of their podcast. And, uh, every so often they just start reading their hate mail. <laughs> They think they're funny, but not everybody agrees. Um, so yeah, so that can always be a touchy area when you get into humor for sure. So let's talk about tech. When it comes to pot, so the two big trends, of course, are AI and video. And I feel like video has been a trend for like 10 years, you know, short form video, video, everything video for about 10 years, right? If you ask anybody what a marketing trend was going on, if video wasn't in their list, they probably said, excluding video, here are other trends, um, because it just has taken over, I think, everything. AI has been a huge trend for the last probably 18 months, even though it's been around a lot longer. What, what is trending in the tech side of podcasting? 
Well, I mean, th- th- there's a few things. So like I have right now, I'm speaking to you through the camera, but I also have an actual teleprompter called the Elgato, Elgato prompter, which basically is, it's, it's like a teleprompter, but there's a screen right here that projects up to that. So it's actually technically my third monitor without being my third monitor. So that helps with looking at the actual camera because then I won't have the monitor here and looking down here, I'll actually be looking up here, but don't be like weird and always stare at the monitor. Cause you sometimes actually have to like look away. So it looks a little bit more like natural because if you're just like always staring like this, it it's not going to be good. People are going to be like, okay, you need to stop. So don't use those AI ones that make your eyes look at the camera all the time because humans, we don't always look at everything a hundred percent all the time. We do go, we, we do wander a little bit. So, I mean, that's another way of doing it. Um, for just gear itself. I mean, you have, I have the, I've tried different things. I have the roadcaster pro tube. They also also have a duo, which is a small, smaller one. I got the second one because I had the first one, but they didn't have the duo when they launched the second one. Cause I would have gotten the duo because this thing is pretty massive, but I mean, that's a good way of multi-tracking yourself out because the editing process, you want to have me as one audio track and then you as another audio track. So you can balance out each one of yours because we all have different voice profiles. And if you have it all smushed together, it's a nightmare to actually EQ because my voice is not the same as yours and vice versa. So I would say the biggest thing you probably should spend your money on if we're talking about gear and tech is going to be the audio because nobody wants to listen to bad audio. People will forgive bad video. Yes, they, I definitely think people forgive a lot of bad video. Uh, they're okay if it feels a little natural and live and authentic. But yes, bad audio. I had one where the guest had a major echo and we couldn't fix it. And so dummy me kept going and saying, all right, well, we'll just give it a shot and I'll try and fix it as best I can. And well, I fixed it as best I could. And it definitely was not good enough. Um, And, you know, it was what it was, but I got like four or five complaints on the audio quality, people and letting me know that it wasn't that good. And I was like, yeah, I know. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I fixed it one time. This was post because I try to be very forgiving with guests because I also know a lot of marketers aren't actually going to buy the any real gear. So I, I kind of have to like be forgiving of that because I'm not going to be like, okay, you really should have a nice microphone because who's going to spend 200 or so dollars if they're just being guests on podcasts. But I had one in a room and it was echoey like crazy. I had, re- I put re- the reverbs on it just, and it did help tamper it, but you can't really ever get rid of it. And there is, there needs to be some reverb somewhere because it doesn't sound natural when it's like no reverb in your room. You got to have it a little natural, but uh, yeah, getting rid of reverb can be, or the echoing of your room can be hard. So that's why you should have like things in the background or like sound pads because, and if, you have a hardwood floor, put a carpet on or put a rug on there because carpet is better for recording. Carpet is better than hardwood surfaces. Yeah. I tell people to find a small space. I've heard, I've come across a couple of different podcasters that record in their closet. They have a walk-in closet and that's where they record. They don't do video, (laughs) but they record in their closet and they're like, yeah, the, between the clothes and the carpet, they don't have any echoing. They've got a really strong quality of sound. It's perfect. And so, just don't be claustrophobic. Exactly. Right. It just depends on how big your closet is. Um, so I think, um, yeah, and I think you can get some quality microphones fairly inexpensively. You know, I mean, some of the older models go on sale. Um, I found a hundred dollar microphone that's a significantly older model that's down to like $40 or something now. So it still works. It's still good quality. It still has great sound, but it's now less expensive. So definitely well, invest you have in to the go sound. Into, yeah. You have to go into like dynamic and then condenser. Cause there's two different avenues you can go to. So the dynamic, which I have, which is the audio technica BP 40, it will reject like most sound 
from here, but it will only pick up sound from here. The condenser picks up everything. So if you don't have a sound treated room, you're going to hear the air conditioner. You're going to hear your computer fans. You're going to hear everything unless you have like NVIDIA has uh, their broadcast system. So if you have NVIDIA graphics cards, now you have to have the 2000, 3000 or 4000 series, which the newest ones aren't cheap, but if you had that, that will help curb all the echo and the background noise that does help. Elgato does make their own microphones, which which they do have a way for you to get rid of that through their partnership with NVIDIA. So there are ways of doing it. And Elgato does have a condenser and a dynamic mic that's about $100. And they're actually not, not bad. So yes, you can get pretty decent mics for cheaper than like your sure SM7B or even my mic. Yeah. So let me ask you a question um, or let me just add a point here for a second for all of the people listening. If you're thinking about starting a podcast and you're thinking about the tech and the information, even if you're starting recording in Zoom, because I know a ton of podcasters that start off recording in Zoom and they have no issue. You have to go in the settings and separate it so that everybody is recorded on a separate track. That is in the settings. That is what Brett is talking about, is that you have to record it on different tracks. And I think that that's just extremely important when you're recording audio. So I just never... I I just never record on Zoom. That's just my thing. Because Zoom, if you have terrible internet connection, we all know you will not get a good recording. Like Riverside and Squadcast slash The Script do have their own. They're a little bit more expensive, but they do have it where it loads locally on your computer and then uploads to the cloud, which gives you the best recording you can get because of the internet. Yes. So I use Riverside. That's what we're recording in right now, in case you guys aren't aware. Uh, we'll have a link to that in the show notes and we'll link to some of Brett's um, references to uh, Elgato and the microphones and things like that also for you. But I think what's really important is, um, again, it's recording on different tracks. Yeah. Zoom, I don't think is ideal, but for some people that are starting on a budget, I get that they do it, but at least take the next step and separate out those audio tracks. Cause I think that that's really important. Um, and then just pray for good internet. Cause I've lost internet before <laughs> in the middle of a snowstorm while I was recording my podcast and my backup battery went on and I was able to jump back in and get it restarted. So let's, let's talk a little bit about content. You have three podcasts, you said, right? So talk to us a little bit about those and how the content is different between them. So I'm kind of like rebranding. I'm still been trying to figure it all out. But when I first started out, I was just PC gaming. I was actually was just gaming in general. Then I was like, well, that's a lot. Let's just do PC gaming. And then I was like, separating into like tech PC gaming and marketing. And then I read a book called big podcast is you probably should niche it even more down. So I was like, okay. So then I just split it up and I, and it, it makes sense because if you're trying to do three different things in one podcast, people don't know what, what they're really listening to. So what I'm my new relaunch eventually soon, because I've been trying to, I had to change my marketing podcast from monthly to weekly because of pod match, which I found you through on my podcast, giving me so many hosts that I had to actually bite the bullet and be like, well, I probably should do this weekly. Cause I have, I have now booked up until September of this year. Just, that's just doing weekly now. Wow. So I've had to batch my, now I'm batching my editing process where I do four and I'm ahead four weeks. So then I can do other things. So it, it doesn't like stress me out of trying because I'm a one man show. So I edit, record, I do it all. So no one else helps me, which it helps me learn things. But back to your original question. So the gaming one, I'm going to be trying to do, I'm actually going to try to be funny as I'm going to be doing like a more of a daily show, but it's going to be still weekly on gaming, but the daily show format and just making fun of things that go on in gaming. Cause there's a lot of things that may, that are funny in gaming that I'm like, like for example, like most, a lot of publishers and developers are trying to do this live service thing, but they, they care more about the monetization 
and not as much about the fun. And the problem is that some developers have come up prioritizing fun over monetization. And guess what they get? They get more money because people are having fun. And the main purpose of playing video games is to have fun. Well, I mean, we can get into competitive multiplayer, which isn't as fun anymore. But the main point is you're supposed to have fun with it, but they haven't they they care more about the money because they're either publicly traded and the and the shareholders are like, why aren't we making money? And it's like, well, we try to put all these monetization schemes in there, but they're not working. It's like because you don't have fun. If gamers aren't having fun and they know they're not having fun, they aren't playing your game. Yeah, it's important, right? Okay, yeah, but so we've it, got the, the, the daily show version of PC gaming, and then... And then uh, Tech, I'm just trying to figure out, it might be doing the same thing, or I might be trying to tweak it a little bit more. I haven't figured that part out, but... And I might just be doing, if I can figure out how to just do interviews again, but that, that one's still ever-evolving. I know, like, my vision for the gaming one, the marketing one is just strictly just interviews because I I know a lot, but I feel like everybody else knows more than me. And it's and I actually like interviewing people. So I like asking them as your audience doesn't know. My first question and my throwaway question is, are you a coffee or tea drinker? Cause it gets people thinking and it's an easy thing for people to ease into the rest of the questions because you, I make you think of something that's so day to day for you that you don't normally think about it, but then you do. And you're like, Oh, I drink this and then I, cause I, I'm a coffee lover too. And then we go into the show that way. So I ease you in. Cause a lot of people are actually pretty afraid of doing, or when I was beginning to do it, people were afraid of doing interviews. And so this was my way of getting them to ease into the interview. Oh, very cool. I like that. I like that a lot. I think, yeah, I think some people are uncomfortable with it. I know I was uncomfortable with it in the beginning. I mean, my husband tells everybody, he's like, oh yeah, no, she does videos all the time now. And she used to do like 17 takes for one episode. Now she's like, eh, it's fine. <laughs> oh yeah. Another tip for people. If you're going to do a podcast, get, li- get used to listening to your voice and being okay with it because you're going to have to edit it no matter what. Exactly. You have to listen to it. I hated listening to my voice long, long before I started podcasting. And then when I had to start editing, I was like, I got, I got over it pretty quick. Trust me, your voice is fine. No matter who you are, what you are, what you sound like, your voice is fine. Do not worry about it. Um, and just own it and go with it. Right. If you're going to do podcasting. So one of the things that we talked about was AI. And again, I love AI. I'm a huge fan of AI and leveraging it to sound like yourself. And it saves me probably about on average 30 hours a week. But my question for you is, are you seeing anything in podcasting trends because so many people are, for lack of a better term, phoning it in with AI um, for blogs and other types of content? Yeah, I mean, like as a warm well, it's a one person show. I mean, even I kind of some things that just phone it in because like I have five different things to upload. So I have to unfortunately use it a little bit more than probably I should, but I still look it over and make sure it sounds good. And it's not like a weird thing, but funny part is, is chat GPT, which is one of them four, it does a better job than three and a half did. So I have cast magic as doing all my show notes and it actually does a pretty decent job now where it's like, well, this actually is convincingly human. So I'm going to let it roll because it's convincingly human. And then I found, so AppSumo is like one of my favorite places to look because it gives you lifetime subscriptions of things. So you pay once and you never have to pay again. (laughs) So that's how I, that's how I bring down my costs for like all the monthly things that you are yearly things that you have to pay for. So I would highly recommend going to AppSumo and seeing, because they do have some stuff for podcasters every once in a while, which is pretty helpful. But I found one that does AI that generates the video or cuts the, my videos for me, because I've been using Opus Clips and it's all right. And I'm, I'm uploading to YouTube. I kind of have to like go into studio and then put it in my playlist and then put on extra stuff that they forget to put in. And it, and it drives me a little nuts. But, um, 
but yeah, I use different things. So like the main editing, like for the audio and the video, I edit myself. I go through it myself. I edit it myself. But once that's done, I upload it to Descript because I have Squadcast. It takes out all the ums and uhs. Only audio only. I don't like it when video because it cuts too much and I don't like jump cuts very much. It, it, it annoys me. I don't know why, but it annoys me to no end. And so I don't do it on the video, but I do it on the audio because no one can see you. So there's no jump cuts. It just takes them out. So then I, I have Captivate for now. Yeah, then it imports it from Descript to Captivate. And then I edit, and then I put in the audio chapters. That's a new thing now into it. And I, it does the intro, it does the three fun facts. And they're actually pretty good fun facts. It actually will find some pretty f- fun facts through cast magic. Give me some, Titles, I'll look through the titles. If I need to tweak them, I'll tweak them. I look, I look at the intro. If I need to tweak it, I'll tweak it. And then I just have other, th- I, I have every, all the other stuff as a template. So it's just more plug and play. So I don't have to keep on like typing things out because that's a lot of brain power. And if I'm trying to get like four episodes done, well, keep the four episode limit done each week, I need to automate it a lot more than I would like to. So, and then adding, other things I want to do, <laughs> it makes it easier. So I'll use this new one, which, uh, which I just started TikTok because even though I don't really like it very much, I know I have to use it. So now I use this one, this new thing that I got from AppSumo that will actually schedule it out for me. I'll look through what they're giving me. This new program that I'm using, that's a lifetime one, gives me about 25 hours for, was it like $350 one time? So it's actually not bad because if you, if I looked at Opus Clips is about $120 per year. And so for about three or four years, I already have paid for what a yearly subscription has done. I use, if we're going to get into tools and AI, I use mm-hmm. uh, DaVinci Resolve to edit everything. So DaVinci Resolve is, so have you used Adobe mm-hmm. products? Yeah. So Adobe, and I used it a long time ago. What I had to do was that I had to edit all the audio in additions, transfer it back over to Premiere. If I want to do something with After Effects, I had to open up After Effects, transfer it back over to Premiere. With DaVinci Resolve, your audio, your video, and your all your FX stuff is in one program. So you don't have to transition to three different programs. So that whole DaVinci Resolve basically is the only software I use now to do all my editing. And I don't have to go to a different audio editing software to do it because you can actually re-record things if you mess up in your video or audio in Resolve itself and it will record it through as well. So if I really wanted it, if it was like, oop, that's a mess up, then I can actually do it again. They have a free version and they have a paid version. Paid version is only one time. So it's about 350, I think. One time you'll get all the uploads. You get you, they do have one AI or they have a few AI ones. One of them is transcriptions. So it will transcribe it above your video and you could download that if you want to and put it up on YouTube and everything. So it is a really handy one. The other one I recommend if you're on a budget is CapCut. Same people that made TikTok do CapCut. It's a pretty good one as well, but I use Resolve because I've been using it since 16 we're on. 18, almost 19 version 19. So for me, there's a lot back to your AI question. I use a lot of different ones. So even questions that I don't. So here's the thing. Most people don't know is that I will have AI write me the questions and those questions are only if I can't find anything else to talk about, but I won't ever actually use them in my marketing podcast. They're just throwaway questions that are very vague in general. So if the conversation dies, I have something to talk about, but I'm actually really listening and just spitballing my questions. No one knows that I'm doing that. Well, except for you now, but I spitball my questions on what you say instead of just these pre questions, but I have the AI do it just so I have questions in case something goes awry and there's just like dead silence or they don't give me enough to talk about. And I have to find more things to talk about. Yes. AI is great for a brainstorming tool like that. But yeah, it's it's a little generic. You need to add a little bit more spice to it for sure. So 
Well, thank you so much, Brett, for all this information. Um, I think some of the important takeaways is that the trends in podcasting are AI and video. And I think the trends in marketing overall are AI and video. So that works and it carries over. Um, podcasting is uh, is growing. While, they're lev- while podcasters like myself and Brett are leveraging AI to its fullest, we're still reviewing the content. It's still us asking the questions. It's still us humans talking to each other. And I think that there's a lot to do there. Don't forget about niching down your topics, because if you're talking about a ton of different things that are, you know, going in a wide variety of stuff, then you might get too wide to the point where people don't know what they're going to hear about next week. I know I ran into that problem for a little bit, but I've focused it down to podcasting, AI and email marketing for the most part and pieces that go in with that, like branding and things like that. But in in relation to those pieces, because otherwise you'd never have a clue what I was going to be talking about next week. Um, So again, just some really good things. And if you're looking to step up your podcast or your podcast editing, Brett covered quite a few different things there. So uh, we'll have some links in the show notes that I'm sure Brett will get me um, that we can share with you guys so that you can go different places. But before I let you go, Brett, I've got one more question for you. And that's a question I ask every guest on the show. What has been your biggest marketing lesson learned? Don't break your RSS feed ever. Like when I was starting out nine years ago, I used FeedBurn, which was Google's thing that they stopped doing that they kind of brought back or not really doing anymore. But I used that with WordPress, broke it once, tried to fix it, broke it again, tried to fix it, broke it again. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to a podcasting house and I'm not caring. I'm not trying to fix it ever again, because that is for podcasting. That's your lifeblood. Your RSS feed is what feeds to all the other Spotify, Apple podcasts, YouTube music. Well, for the future, you'll, you'll have Google podcasts until March. I mean, until April and then it's gone, but all the other ones, it will feed to it. So never break that. And it's a nightmare to fix. Yeah, it feeds my website, it feeds all of the podcast directories. Luckily, it would be very difficult for me to break it because Buzzsprout, who I use as my host, actually has it pretty well set up, So, which is good. Um, and I think it would take me work to figure out how to break it, which is good because otherwise I probably could break it pretty easily. So thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. I'm hoping that everybody listening got something out of this. Podcasting is such a great way to fuel your marketing and your business. Brett and I can both attest to it. But if you did learn something, it would really help me out if you would rate and subscribe wherever you're listening or watching if you're watching on YouTube. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Imperfect Marketing. Until next time.